Time to find out what's under those boxes. Standing on my mystery box, and there is definitely a smell. I can't put my finger on it. One. It smells like dirty feet in here now. Two. <laughs> Three, lift. Oh. Awesome. What is that? In front of you is an array of raw ingredients. Some are exotic, and some may be more familiar, just like you'd find in the kitchens of any quality restaurant. But these ingredients are not just from any restaurant. They're from our restaurants. You have 60 minutes to make us a restaurant quality dish. We'd be proud to serve. I hope we don't have to use all the ingredients. I'd be in trouble. Your 60 minutes starts now. <laughs> Measuring cups. I'm either gonna work with the pork belly or the monkfish. I haven't really decided yet. Maybe some fried onions. I don't really know. No clue what I'm doing. Just throwing stuff in a pot. I am going to make pigeon soup or pigeon broth with some uh, Asian style noodles and some mushrooms. I'm gonna be making a butter and pork basted monkfish with a sea urchin velite. Now, the pitfalls of monkfish is that if you overcook it, it gets very rubbery. So I would give it a really great sear on top, roast it in the oven, baste it with lots of butter, some herbs, and if you overcook that fish, it's over. 30 minutes. Fuck. You have 30 minutes to impress us with our ingredients. Eric, what are you doing? I'm going to be pan searing some monkfish. This is a durian sauce that they made for the fish. That's actually quite salty. Yeah, how are you thickening that? Uh, it was just the jam and some of the fermented bean. Oh, I think it needs a little bit more durian. OK. But let me give you a word of wisdom. Being complex and being innovative is not the same thing. Hey, Tamara. Hi, chef. Fresh noodles, fresh broth. Yes, yeah, chef. A pigeon broth. That's delicious. Thank you, chef. Incredible. Looks like you've been kind of flying under the radar. Is this your chance to really come out? This is exactly my chance to come out and yeah. shine. Very, very impressive so far. I love this. Tell me what you're doing. Chanterelle mushroom monkfish. And the sea urchin? Just made a broth with taro root and a little bit of fish sauce. So you use the taro root to thicken the broth? That's right. Oh, smart idea. Have you ever worked with sea urchin? No, I'm definitely taking a risk. I'm going to make like a, a soup with Whatever this is, it's treated like a potato. And I don't want to go towards the Italian ingredients, right? I want to try something different here. That's nice. Five minutes. You have five minutes left. Your final five minutes. Not a time to be in confusion. Now is the time to get ready. I'm shaking too bad. Wow, there's some very interesting looking dishes happening out there. Everyone's raising their game here. I think it's my yelling. <laughs> Tamara is making a soup with fresh cut noodles. Where's she getting noodles from? She made them. Oh, wow. She wants to win. Now, on the other hand, Carly has made flatbread with mushroom and miso mugfish on the side. And she doesn't look too sure about it, to be honest with you. Kayla, a whole pigeon? That is ballsy. Kayla looks worried. Very worried. So why would she do that? They cut it open and it's bloody and it's still squawking. I will definitely not make a good impression. I want to see the finishing touches going on those plates. You need to be finishing them up. 30 seconds. Time to panic. After observing and tasting throughout the challenge, the judges will now take one final look before selecting the most promising dishes. I'm pretty confident. I think I'm going to be called up for sure. We asked you to make us a delicious dish with some superb and perhaps unfamiliar ingredients from our restaurants. There were some dishes that particularly impressed us. The first dish we'd like to taste was made by someone who has never won a mystery box challenge. 
I really, really need to win one of these mystery boxes. I need to go in that back room and see what that's all about. Please step forward. Tamara, bring your dish up here. My noodles turned out perfect, and the broth is super, so this dish is for the judges. Can you tell me a little about your dish, please? An Italian-Asian fusion dish with Italian noodles and Asian broth. The broth, I love the color, that rich golden brown. It's amazing. Thank you, Chef. If I would change one thing on this dish, I would look for a little of that pigeon meat nestled under the noodles or in between that just popped out every once in a while. Very nicely done. Thank you. Looks very nice. The richness and the city, the perfect balance. That, to me, it's a very, very nice dish. Thank you, Chef. The second home cook we'd like to see was clearly inspired by a difficult ingredient. That home cook is... Danielle. How do you feel about your dish? I feel like this is the strongest dish that I've brought up to you. Walk me through it. What is it? Brown butter basted monkfish served in a sea urchin velite, and I've topped it with chanterelle mushroom and a little bit of taro crisps for some crunch. It's very good. I'm talking like Alvin, my mouthful. <laughs> I like the acidity. The fish is cooked properly. It's a great dish. It's good to see you coming to the top now. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next person we like to call forward is no stranger to the top spot. Please step forward. Marita. I've made a little bit of a glaze for the monkfish, and I have a sweet and spicy kimchi slaw on the bottom. Fish looks quite nice. Wow, there's a lot going on in my mouth. You got the fish nicely cooked. It goes nicely with the kimchi. And I'm glad you didn't over-season it because kimchi is very salty. That was smart, and I like it. It's good to see you thinking outside the box, and your repertoire is growing. You continue to impress. Today, because the dishes were so good, we've decided to try four. I'm thinking, that's me. That's me for sure. I hope they're gonna call my name. The cook who made the fourth and final dish took a calculated risk, but it's gonna take a closer look to see if it paid off. Please step forward, Kayla. So I did a whole roasted squab, and then I made a jus with the pan drippings from the squab. What I'm most interested in is if the pigeon is cooked medium to medium rare. Well, let's see. Oh. It looks good. It looks nicely cooked. I'm salivating already. And surprisingly tender. The pigeon is outstanding. I think it's safe to say that this is probably the riskiest thing anyone's done so far. To roast an entire squab on the bone in one hour and serve it perfectly cooked. Overall, very good job. Four outstanding dishes, but only one can be the winner. The person who cooked the best dish who will get a huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge. That home cook is Danielle. Congratulations, Danielle. You're about to gain control of the competition.